Last two Sundays, I preached about hell. Today, I'm going to preach about death. And I want the angels in heaven to credit the account of T.T. Crabtree for today's message. Text for the message is found in the book of Genesis, chapter number 2 and verse 17. On this 26th day, February 2023, Genesis 2 and 17. It says there, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Sorry for today's message is, what the Bible says about death. I encountered a lovely lady this week that had difficulty using the word death in her vocabulary, experiencing deep grief. She pushed aside the word death. But I want to submit this message to try to help you out. What the Bible says not what Langston says, not what the church says, not what the Pope says, but what the Bible says about death. My friend, I searched far, deep, and wide to fetch Today's sermon, what the Bible says about death. I must submit to you at the outset, text was from Genesis, but I want to just submit to you from Jump Street what the book of Revelation, the last Bible book, has to say about death. Revelation 21, 1 through 4 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice uh, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Thank you, Lord. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. What the Bible says, what Scripture says, in these verses that I just read, is that the new heaven is a place where death will be vanquished, done away with. There will be divine fellowship 
with God. Yes, God will be with us right here, right now, as we sojourn here. We're going to shed a few tears here on earth. But one day, this earth will pass away and God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Sorrow, crying, and pain will pass away never to return. I'm talking about what the Bible says about death. Now let's think about this. Let's think about the fact that there are so many different theories about what happens to our souls when we die. This indicates that our desire to understand, this indicates our desire to understand this phenomenon of death. We sometimes hear and sometimes express uh, uh, our views in words like the other life, talking about death, life in the next world, the afterlife, life on the other side. But does the Bible, I ask you rhetorically, does the Bible speak conclusively on this question of death? I'm going to argue today that yes, the Bible gives answers and provides abounding hope for Christians particularly as we deal with the death of a loved one or as we prepare to face death ourselves. You want to consider another question? I'll submit it. What is death? In the first instance, the Bible leads me to conclude that death is the consequence of sin, results from violating the laws and commands of God. Romans 5 and 12 tells us, it says, by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for or because all have sinned. My friend, when Adam and Eve broke God's command in the Garden of Eden, death became their companion. They died spiritually because they broke their relationship with God. How's your relationship with God today? That vital relationship they had enjoyed with God for eons in the garden was gone, dead. The principle of death uh, became operative in their physical lives as well. They began, Adam and Eve, to die physically. Uh, the inevitable deterioration of your and my physical bodies is a result of sin. Also, in addition to death being the consequence of sin, I want to submit to you in the second instance that death is the lot 
of all people. Under Hebrews 9 and 27, we see two things about death. It, we see it is appointed unto men. Hebrews 9 and 27, appointed unto men, wants to die. That's the first fact. Second fact is, but after this, the judgment. Death is inescapable, my friend. We are dying progressively, and we'll, we, we, and we will die terminally. Can't escape that. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 tells us that death terminates life on earth. Genesis 3 and 19 describes death as a return to the dust. Genesis 25 and 8 uh, says these words. Slow down a little bit here. Genesis 5 and 28 says, Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man, full of years, and was gathered unto his people. In this description of the death of Abraham, uh, we see two things. We see the absence of breath, and we see a departure, says he was gathered huh, unto his people. That's a departure, my friend. Now, this notion of death is, uh, this notion of death as a departure is expressed also in Philippians 1 and 23, where, where Paul talks about having a desire to depart. But in Philippians 1 and 21, he says, for me to live, mm, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And getting all the way down, my friend, to what the Bible says about death, I must point out uh, uh, this important fact. Thank you, Lord. The coming of Jesus Christ, important fact, the coming of Jesus Christ and his teachings clarified the death experience for Christians in an extraordinary way. The transfiguration of Jesus re re reported in Matthew 17, 1 through 8 shows us this remarkable fact. That is, the physically dead have been seen and recognized by the living. I'm going to repeat that. The coming of Jesus Christ and his teachings clarified the death experience for Christians in an extraordinary way. The transfiguration of Jesus reported in Matthew 17, 1 through 8, shows us this remarkable fact. You're just going to have to read it. The physically dead have been seen and recognized by the living. Peter, James, John, spiritually recognized Moses, and Elijah. Furthermore, 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 says, Now, right now, I'm putting the right in it, but I'll read it like it said there. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 says, Now we see through a glass darkly. One day, 
we shall know as we are known. My friend, all the mysteries and perplexities of this year, of this life on earth, will be clear to us when we get over on the other side, when we reach heaven. Whew. What about, and I would approach this matter gently, but what about the state of the dead? What the Bible says about that? Think about it in two ways. The state of the dead before the resurrection of Jesus uh, and after his resurrection. Think about it in those two veins. The story of the rich man and Lazarus that I mentioned sermon two Sundays ago. Last Sunday too. Uh, story was told by Jesus before he died before he rose from the grave. And it is clear that departed dead people were in heaven and hell before Jesus was raised from the dead. And after Jesus rose from the dead, Believers were said to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Death is also referred to as being asleep. In the New Testament, that's where death is referred to, being asleep. I'm going to submit my conclusion and get on out of here. My friend, although physical death is not something we normally look forward to, I want you to know that God sees death uh, as the glorious homecoming of his children. Jesus said in John 19 and 2, in my father's house, of many mansions. He is going to prepare a place for us. Death is no enemy to the believers in Jesus Christ. Death is simply a blessed translation from an earthly life of imperfection, an earthly life of incompletion, to a life of perfection and eternal joy. That, my friend, is what the Bible says about death. I'm gonna close by reciting the sinner's prayer. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for all the wrongs that I have done. And I ask you to forgive me. I now accept your gift of eternal life thanking you for your love and for your forgiveness and I thank you Jesus for the new life that I can have in you from this day forward I choose to follow you if you pray that prayer my friend you Get your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We will meet in glory. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Now unto him, the only wise God, Jesus. To whom be glory, majesty, dominion, 
and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. You have heard what the Bible says about death. Question is, what will you do about it? Be blessed. We used to close our church services by saying, Lord, watch between me and thee when we're absent, one from another. God bless you and keep you till we meet again. Goodbye.